All right, y'all, I am back. I am Dr. Jada Jackson, licensed mental health counselor. And so uh, just started a couple of videos on the court case with Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade, and we've got some really great feedback. So this next video is going to be on the psychology of betrayal. We are going to do a breakdown, a, psycho a psychological analysis. And so the first two videos, just to um, for clarity purposes, uh, the first two videos were not really psychological analysis. It was just laying the foundation of the case and everything that's been going on with the case. And so the first video was just kind of a summary of the case. The second video was just introducing people to the key players. Some of y'all already know, because I saw it in the chat. You're like, oh yeah, yeah, I know this and I know this and I know this and I know this person is doing this. And so that wasn't necessarily for you. It's for all of those, as I said before, who were kind of hiding under a rock and just, you know, didn't know what was going on. So I wanted to help them with the key players. And, you know, what do they say? Uh, um, life, you know, is, is like a, a, a theater and all of us are playing a part. We're playing a role. We are characters in this um, theater of life. And so I uh, wanted you all to know who those characters are, but we're going to dive into some characteristics of the psychology of betrayal. Now, I want to make something very clear. I am not here to diagnose. As a therapist, I am not here to diagnose anyone. However, we are going to talk about the real nitty gritty down deep and dirty behaviors and traits and characteristics of pathology. We are going to talk about that. And guess what y'all get to do? You get to decide and determine who these traits and characteristics are assigned to. That's your homework. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. So again, um, I just want to have a little bit of fun here, but again, the, the case itself is just so incredibly juicy. Uh, today was the last day. It was the closing arguments. I don't know how many of you got a chance to actually watch it. Um, I was working earlier, so I have not watched it yet, but I had to hop on to do this one video. So let's get into it right now. Let's go. We're going to talk about the psychology of betrayal. And so when we're talking about analyzing the psychological profile of an individual who might say viciously betray someone, um, you know, we have to explore a variety of facets of their personality. And so we need to look at their personality. We need to look at uh, their motivations, their behavior, and the potential underlying psychological factors. And so that's what we're gonna get into right now. So I am going to do this kind of old school in the sense that um, a lot of what I do is teach. And I am going to uh, teach this. I'm gonna show you a slide that has these this breakdown on it so that you can visualize it, so that you can see it. Uh, some people are visual learners. And if you are a visual learner, I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help you out. So here we go. Let's take a look at this. All right, let's get into it. All right, so when we're talking about personality traits, we, we're, we are gonna look at three different areas as, that are that correlate or that connect or that have relationship with betrayal specifically. Now, we can go in 150 different directions, but we're not gonna do that. We're only gonna look at three personality traits. The first one that we are going to talk about, and I don't know if you know what this word is, but guess what? You get to do your homework. Go ahead and Google that word and, and write it in the chat and tell me, um, tell me what it is. Tell me what this means. Uh, it is Machiavellianism. And so this word uh, speaks to the deceit, the manipulation, the lack of empathy, just all the dirty things that we can do to another human being. That's what this um, is speaking to. So again, I don't know in this uh, movie portrayal that we are seeing playing out in the court system, who might, you know, have that. I'm going to let you assign uh, these specific traits to who you think it may be. Of course, narcissism. I've seen this in the chat a lot. Um, 
I know that some of you um, have assigned narcissism to a couple of different characters uh, in this theater. And, and, and so um, go ahead and write that in the chat. But when we're talking about narcissism, one of the things I always say, especially as a mental health counselor, is we don't want to throw this word around lightly. We don't want to just say that just because you're taking selfies that you're a narcissist. You, you may not be diagnosed with a personality a personality disorder of narcissism but you may have symptoms or traits of narcissism so i want to make that clear um you know uh one of my professors told me uh years ago um dr shire said listen you see personality symptoms or traits of person not symptoms traits of personality disorders in everyone Every everyone has a little bit of pathology. So again, just because someone has traits of narcissism doesn't necessarily mean that they're diagnosed with the personality disorder of narcissism. But when we're talking about um, narcissism in the context of betrayal, I just want to make that clear the correlation between narcissism and betrayal, because that's what we kind of see playing out on uh, the stage of this court case. We see, um, you know, the betrayal of relationships based on their own self-interest. Maybe they're seeking power and control. Uh, maybe they're seeking admiration. But the key here is they're doing so without regard for the welfare of another person or the harm that's inflicted on another person. So that's that narcissism area. Number three in this uh, space is going to be the antisocial traits. I saw a video, um, I don't know if you all have a chance to watch, um, his name is Lion, uh, Lionel, but he's this really cool older white guy who um, I absolutely love watching him because he's just really straightforward and, you know, like uh, straight up the middle. But he said that he felt there were some um, antisocial traits that he saw. What else did he say? He said, um, he, I want to say, he's, I, I think he said sociopath is, is the word that he used. But interestingly enough, everyone has their analysis of, of what's uh, going on in this case and some of the behaviors that they're seeing. But the anti-social um, traits. So these are uh, uh, characteristics that include uh, deceitfulness, impulsivity, and again, just the complete disregard for social norms. And um, what I like to say, like just the rights of other human beings, just, just completely disregarding the rights of others. And so again, this these three fall under the personality traits. Now, let's look at motivations. The first one is uh, self-interest. And so of course, individuals, who uh, enter into the space of betrayal or betraying someone they once had some form of affection with or they had a close relationship with or they um, had an, an intimate relationship. And well, let me say this sidebar. Someone in the chat wrote, um, it was the betrayal happened between Terrence Bradley and Nathan Wade. And that is that is absolutely right. That betrayal was hands down second to none. I, I, I could not believe that uh, Terrence Bradley was in cahoots with Ashley Merchant to take down Wade and Willis. That was, when that came, I was literally looking at the screen like, oh no, like I, I literally couldn't believe it. But at the end of the day, it's the self-interest. So what are we talking about when we, we're talking about self-interest? Um, you know, it could be a number of things to protect oneself. It could be financial gain. It could be to advance one's career. It could be to avoid negative consequences for themselves. It could be a number of um, reasons for why people do what they do. But again, I'm going to, um, this is your homework. 
<laughs> Let's get at it. Put it in the chat. Tell me what you think. Revenge or resentment and lack of empathy. Those are the other two. And those are pretty self-explanatory. Of course, we know that, it's, especially in the instance of um, Bradley, I know that he could have certainly had some um, revenge or resentment toward um, Wade. And y'all tell me why he would have that. You know, you know, and then lack of remorse. That's just, you just have absolutely no remorse for your actions. It's like you can lie and deceive and intentionally, and you can do all the things you can manipulate and you just don't have any remorse for it. Or you learn to rationalize or, or even justify your behavior for why you did what you did. I had someone about a year ago I mean, when I talk about betrayal, betrayed me significantly. And when I confronted the person, they had a real strong reasoning and justification for why they did it, which made absolutely no doggone sense whatsoever. But if you like it, I love it. Just know that boundaries have been set. Anyway, let's keep going. So what's the next point? Behavioral patterns. Okay, so we've looked at personality traits. We've looked at motivations. Now we're looking at behavioral patterns. So the behavioral patterns are going to consist of deception, aggression, and hostility. Again, there's that lack of remorse. Those are all behavioral patterns. So what does that look like? Um, in the deception realm, a person may just concoct elaborate stories or narratives or schemes of manipulation in order to deceive another person. Um, and to me, that's the treachery of it. Good Lord, that is the absolute treachery of a human being who goes out of their way to concoct a scheme or to devise a scheme to manipulate someone else in the act of betrayal. Ooh, it almost makes my skin crawl. But that's well, that's kind of what we're seeing. That's kind of what we're seeing. I want to know what y'all think. Just please, please, please. And would you do me a favor? Will you like this video? And if you haven't subscribed yet, will you subscribe? We are going to do a series of um, the psychology behind. Uh, shout out to Miss Ebony, who was like, I want to know more about, she wants to, to talk about, um, oh gosh, Wendy Williams. She wants to look at what's going on with that. And so, um, and tell your friends, tell your friends. Let's talk about all things psychology. Let's just look at the psychology and the pathology of um, just life. Because I say it all the time. You hear me say this. Life is messy. Life is complicated. Life can be really ugly sometimes. But we don't have to choose to betray and to be hateful and to be deceitful and manipulative manipulative toward people. Uh, yeah, we can love people and really engage in healthy uh, relationship with people. And that's what I do for a living. That is what I do for a living. And I absolutely love it. Okay, let's keep going. So we looked at the behavioral patterns. Now let's look at the underlying psychological factors. What does that mean? So um, this is one thing I love to do when I do my, um, when I do my brunches and uh, my workshops and seminars, we do an attachment style um we take an assessment for attachment styles. And so there's something that's called insecure attachment. And then we look at childhood trauma or adverse childhood experiences because all of us have it, all of us. There is not a single person who is listening to me right now who doesn't have some form of childhood trauma or unresolved childhood issues. That's why we have to do the work and we have to do the intentional work in therapy. And I am, yes, I am a, a therapy advocate. I am a psychology um, advocate. I am a mental health advocate. I'm advocating for all things mental health. Why? Because we go to the doctor to get our hearts checked. We go to the doctors when we have COVID. We go to the doctors when we have the flu. We go to the doctor when we break a limb, but we don't go to get our mental health check in or check in to get our mental health right, to get our mental straight. We don't do that. And so I'm here because that's what I love to do. That's what I do for a living. And I believe that when people take care of their mental well-being, 
their lives flourish and they're enabled to engage in the love and the peace and the contentment and all the things they, they like. Okay, so I'm gonna get off my high horse. So insecure attachment. So there are different types of attachment styles. There's secure attachment, insecure attachment, avoidant attachment, um, anxious attachment. So again, it's important to know um, what kind of attachment style you want. And if you want, I, I may be able to drop that um, in. The, if you guys want it, just let me know. And um, I'll drop a link in the chat so you can get it. This is not, I'm not selling anything or doing anything like that. It's just, I'll give it to y'all. Y'all can download it. Um, and then there's the childhood trauma, of course. And then personality disorders. And there's a what's called a dark triad. Y'all look that up. Go Google dark triad. Y'all let me know in the chat what that is. But as you can see there, it's a combination of those three areas. But at the end of the day, you want to ensure that when you are engaging with people, because some of y'all right now like, oh, I know someone who... Um, is aggressive and, and hostile and have a lack of remorse and deceptive. And y'all know them. Y'all know some people like that. Now we just see it um, playing out on a large stage because this court case, um, there's just so much attention on it, but um, let's talk about it. Let, let's talk about it. I want to see it in the chat. So um, again, that is my breakdown for the psychology behind betrayal and what do we see? Who are the players? We see all the players in this. And if, if you don't know who the players are, go to my video number two, the second video on this. And um, let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. So I'm going to ask you one more time, hit the like button. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead and subscribe. My next video is going to be about narcissism. So I want to keep them short and sweet. So the next video is going to be about narcissism and we're going to break down the traits of narcissism. And again, someone in the chat believes that Fani uh, displayed traits of narcissism. So we're going to break it down and you all can say for yourself what it is that you think. And I'm going to be right there in the chat looking. So, all right, that's it for me in this video. I'll see you in the next one.